in our last lesson we were able to understand the meaning of population density so population density refers to the number of people living in per unit area of land population density varies with time and place and there are various factors that influence the density of population of any particular region in this lesson we'll be understanding we will establish a relationship between the population density and resources and understand how both of these influence each other now let's go back to the example of land a that we had learned about in the last lesson so here we'll be understanding how density of a population may vary and how it may influence or affect the resources of that particular area now if you remember the population of land a initially was 1000 but over a certain period of time 1000 more people have now started living in land a so the new population now is 2000 However the area is still the same that is 4 km square so where the area remained the same the population has increased which means that there is a new population density of this particular area now take for instance the capacity to hold a certain number of people in per unit square kilometer of land a is 300 which means that the capacity of the land is 300 people per square kilometer however the current situation does not match its capacity how so the new population density says that there are 500 people per square kilometer living in land a so there are 500 people in each square kilometer of land a that means it has already crossed or exceeded its capacity now once the capacity to hold a certain number of people has exceeded it also means that the resources that were initially available to the people there has now also got limited so we see that there is a inverse relationship between the population of a particular area or the population density of an area to the resources that are present in that area so we see that there is an immense pressure of population on land a and its resources so what do we call such a situation such a situation is known as overpopulation so overpopulation is a situation in which the available resources are not enough for the people or the population density of that particular area this leads to the shortage of energy to the other available resources like enough drinking water or enough school or educational or health facilities for the people living there so in overall view we can say that the resources are limited as the population density increases so in a situation of overpopulation there is a scarcity of resources So we just saw that only 20% of the earth's land surface is inhabitable while the rest of the earth's land surface is uninhabitable that it is not suitable for human habitation which only means that the resources are quite limited for the ever increasing population so the rapid growth in population in the past few generation has now been a threatening point for the sustainability of planet earth so here's a satirical depiction of how the ever increasing population is now a threat to the people of planet earth so we see that people are on one side celebrating that we have hit a population of 7 billion however we soon realize that there are not enough resources to fulfill the needs of all this 7 billion people right so we see that here there's a bean balance which simply explains that the population is much heavier than the resources available and such a situation is known as overpopulation so here's the ratio of overpopulated regions where the number of resources available for the population is not enough 
Now, overpopulation has led to excessive industrialization and urbanization. So, overpopulation in a particular region means that the industries have to now fasten up, pull up the socks and work even more harder to fulfill the needs of the people living in that particular region. So in order to fulfill the needs of the people and to industrialize the area more, the industries are leading to environmental pollution that affects the health of the people living there. So on one hand, where they are trying hard to fulfill the needs of the people, they are also on the other hand simultaneously polluting the environment, thus adversely affecting the health of the people for which they were working hard. So it's almost a trap. So overpopulation is a very unfortunate situation that the world is facing now. Now, this continuous pressure of population on resources that are available in a particular area leads to over-exploitation and depletion of resources. Now, this may lead to poverty, hunger, and a lot of other crises that is degrading the overall health of a particular area or a region. So the continuous pressure of population over limited resources like land and water has led to various problems that the world is facing now. Poverty, unemployment, hunger, disease, famine, and many such other natural disasters are a result of this overpopulation. So we see that we need to be very, very careful on our part to not over exploit the limited resources so that we can avoid such a situation of hunger and uncertainty. Overpopulation may also lead to the growth of slums. So the limiting of resources has also lead to high cost of living. Now due to this, the overpopulated areas are leading to the growth or the creation of slums which are characterized by unhygienic living conditions. So here are pictures of the Dharavi slum, which is the largest slum in Asia. So you see that people are unfortunately living in such unhygienic conditions because of the problem of overpopulation. So such poor living conditions and the growth of slums also sometimes force people to turn to unjust methods of getting employed or earning money. And this has also led to the increase in crime in such overpopulated places. Now, before we proceed with our lesson, could you help me fill in the blanks? So, overpopulation may also lead to the growth of slums, which is characterized by regular health camps, availability of clean drinking water, unhygienic living conditions, or a good drainage system. Yes, we just learned that such slums are characterized by unhygienic living conditions. Unfortunately, there is no safe and clean drinking water, neither a good drainage system and nor there are regular health camps. People are living in such unfortunate and poor conditions and they have no access to such basic needs. So, such slums are characterized by unhygienic living conditions. So that was a situation of overpopulation where resources were falling short and the population was ever increasing. But on the other hand, on the contrary, we have a situation of underpopulation. Now what exactly is underpopulation? It is a condition where the population of a particular region is too small to fully utilize the available resources. It only means that the resources are more than enough for the small population there, but there is no one to fully utilize these resources. So this leads to low productivity and thus low economic development, right? So here's a beam balance that again gives a simple representation of the ratio between the population that is very low and the resources that are more than enough in an underpopulated region. However, underpopulation also has a positive side. So, underpopulation or lower population results in abundance of natural resources for the people living there. And it also means that there is less of congestion, less of fighting for the limited resources. And hence, we have a cleaner as well as greener environment. There are enough jobs available for all the people and pollution is very less. However, there is an exception. So Japan is an exception that faces a problem of underpopulation where 
the working population comprises of the majority of aged people so the aged people here make up the working population of the country right now this on the other hand also reflects the fact that the medical infrastructure of this underpopulated country is very very strong now it throws light on another factor that such a exception of japan is due to its low birth rate and death rate we'll be learning about these two important phrases in our next lesson and we will be understanding how these two are important factors that influence the study of population dynamics however for now we have understood that japan is an exception to the problem or situation of underpopulation where the working population is constituted by the aged people and it throws light on the fact that the medical infrastructure of this particular country is very very strong now we have understood overpopulation and underpopulation and we have also understood how resources are being affected by the population density of these two situations however there is also a situation of optimum population now what do we mean by that well optimum population is a situation in which available resources can provide at least basic necessities for all its people so neither there is over availability of resources so there is no resources getting wasted neither there is low availability of resources for the people so there are enough resources for the number of people living in that area so there's a good balance between the resources and the population of that area such a situation is known as optimum population again we have a depiction a simple beam balance to show that the ratio between the population and the resources is quite balanced so in a situation of optimum population we realize that be it education be it medical infrastructure be it government policies or be it employment all are nicely balanced and people are mostly satisfied in such a situation so here we have three situation reflecting on the relationship between population and resources so first we have a condition of overpopulation where the population is much more than the resources available for the population so such a situation is overpopulation then we have a situation of underpopulation where there are enough resources actually more than enough for the small population that is residing in that area right so there is under utilization of the resources available and finally we have a situation of optimum population where there is a good balance between the population and resources so in this lesson we were able to understand the positive and negative effect of population density which is a very important aspect of population dynamics so in our next lesson we learn more about the other aspects of population dynamics Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now